Well, my name is Bill Bishop, and I'm a faculty member in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at the University of Waterloo. I'm also the Director of Admissions for the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, you might not know this, but I was actually a graduate of the Computer Engineering Program at the University of Waterloo. I did both my Computer Engineering degree uh, at the undergrad level, and then I followed that up with an Electrical Engineering degree at the Master's level, and finally my PhD in Electrical and Computer Engineering. And today I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the University of Waterloo. Uh, certainly we'd love to see uh, students come out to the University of Waterloo when it's possible to do so. And we really hope that we see you here sometime in the future. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about electrical and computer engineering today. And I'll start first by giving you a brief outline of what I'm gonna talk about. I'll first introduce the topic of electrical engineering discuss how the field was created and why it's important. I'll talk a little bit about computer engineering, uh, what the field was created to do and what modern computer engineers do today. I'll talk a little bit about the EC department at the University of Waterloo and what makes it unique. And I'll talk about the undergraduate programs offered. I'll also then spend a little bit of time talking about the co-op program, which is one of the main distinguishing factors of the electrical and computer engineering program at the University of Waterloo. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about student life and give you some reasons to seriously consider uh, the University of Waterloo in your future. So first, let's start up with the origins of electrical engineering. Now, the field of electrical engineering was established to design and build electrical power systems. And if you look at the screen, you can see a shot that I took of the Hoover Dam when I was in uh, the greater Las Vegas area. Uh, this is an example of the type of system that uh, our students will eventually be capable of building after completing our electrical engineering program. Well, modern electrical engineering, of course, encompasses much more than power systems. It involves all design activities from uh, low voltage electrical signals to all of the systems that use them. There are over 100,000 practicing electrical engineers worldwide. And you might be surprised to find out that the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers is actually the largest professional technical organization in the world with over 400,000 active members. Now, computer engineering is a field that focuses more on the design analysis and application of computer systems and their encompassing software. The first North American computer engineering program was offered in 1971 at Case Western Reserve University. And modern computer engineers design computer hardware and computer software to process data and to control systems. Uh, computer engineers like myself uh, build everything from uh, computer chips all the way to the software systems that we rely upon today to make everything work. Now, the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at the University of Waterloo is the largest department on our campus. Uh, this particular program supports over 2,500 students at the undergraduate and graduate levels. It has over 11,800 alumni in the field, and it has about 95 faculty members, as well as 50 support staff. And we happen to offer a wide range of programs. Not only do we offer electrical and computer engineering programs, uh, which are accredited by the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board, but we also partner with other departments to offer the following accredited undergraduate programs. Biomedical engineering, mechatronics engineering, nanotechnology engineering, and software engineering. Now, if you're a student in our first year program, uh, you will take a number of courses uh, that you would expect typical of an electrical and computer engineering program. These courses are actually common to both electrical engineers and to computer engineers at the University of Waterloo. The courses include courses like calculus, linear algebra, classical mechanics, which you might recall as another name for a subset of physics, communication, the engineering profession practice, the fundamentals of programming, and a brand new course that we've recently launched, which is a project studio, where you get to do hands-on experimentation with electronics. 
In your second term of studies, uh, you get more experience that's specific to the program of study that you're interested in. So again, you get some strengthening in calculus and you get some strengthening in physics in the form of electricity and magnetism. But you also now get digital circuits and systems and a course on discrete mathematics and logic, as well as a course in linear circuits. These courses are designed to prepare you for your co-op work terms so that you have the basic skills necessary to be successful as an electrical and computer engineer. And we have a number of topics of study within our programs. Many of these topics you don't get to uh, take in courses until you get to second and third year and beyond, but it's good to know what you may eventually be doing. So first, uh, we have antennas, microwaves, and wave optics as an area of study. We, of course, have biomedical engineering. We have circuits and systems for those who really want to focus in on the electronic side of the world. We have communications and information systems in case you want to learn how radio frequency transmission works and, of course, how cell phones work. We have computer hardware, which is my area of expertise, learning how to design computer chips from the fabrication stage all the way up to the implementation stage. Computer software, nanotechnology, which examines looking at the design of very small uh, components and parts. Uh, pattern analysis and machine intelligence, which really is a, a form of artificial intelligence uh, and also looks at the way that we control machines and how they interact with one another. Power and energy systems, of course, uh, a core area of electrical and computer engineering. Quantum information, uh, a rather expanding area of study, which is now looking at uh, how things behave at the quantum mechanics level. Silicon devices and integrated circuits, again, looking at the fabrication of, of computer chips, but more focusing on the technology and the way that we build the devices themselves. Systems and controls for those who are interested in robotics. Very large scale integration, uh, which is a, an area that deals with design of, again, processor chips and uh, computer chips, but at a different level of abstraction than say the fabrication level or at the higher level design that you might see in computer hardware. And of course, wireless communications, which is a huge area of discussion. Now their program is structured uh, in a way that students that take either electrical engineering or computer engineering will be taking the same courses for their first three academic terms. And this has a huge advantage. This is very much unique to the University of Waterloo. What this means is that this allows for easy transfers between the two disciplines. So if you apply to be a computer engineer, but you decide after your first three terms you'd rather be an electrical engineer, it is very easy to transfer to the other program. And the same can be said the opposite direction. Now technical electives begin in third year, and this is when you get to specialize in your area of expertise. And often this is driven by the co-op placements that you'll have in your undergrad program. You may have already realized what you want to specialize in as you move forward. And the EC department offers more than 30 technical electives. And of course, students may also take technical electives from other engineering departments and faculties. So if you want to take a particularly interesting computer science course, you're allowed to do that. If you want to take a course from the mechatronics program, that's possible as well. Uh, there are, of course, uh, many opportunities for expanding your technical knowledge at the University of Waterloo. And with the largest en engineering undergrad program in Canada, uh, certainly there are many opportunities to take some exciting courses. And these are a list of some of our more popular technical electives uh, that you may be interested in. I'll just highlight a few of them. Uh, a lot of our software students really like taking a course on algorithm design analysis, and of course, uh, cryptography and system security, and image processing. These are very popular software courses. My area focuses more on embedded computer systems, which is the design of computer chips and computer software that goes into devices uh, that we use every day, 
but we perhaps don't realize that computers are embedded within them. You might be surprised to learn, for example, that a car seat uh, may have upwards of 10 processors within it just to control all of the various aspects of the car seat. Uh, then, of course, we have uh, courses in fabrication technologies for micro and nano devices, uh, distributed computing, which is a form of uh, software engineering, uh, cooperative and adaptive algorithms, which gets towards the artificial intelligence uh, side of things, uh, computer security in the, the general sense, uh, looking at how we uh, protect the computer systems that we trust these days, programming for performance, electrical distribution systems, power systems analysis, uh, radio and wireless systems, photonic devices, robot dynamics and control, and autonomous vehicles. And I should point out that once you start down a path within electrical and computer engineering of picking your technical electives, it is still possible to branch out further. So speaking from my personal experience, when I was a fourth year student, uh, although I was predominantly interested in computer design and software design, I did spend time doing robot uh, courses and robot programming, and I also did some design in uh, the area of uh, chip design. So I took a very large scale integration course that was offered by our program. So you do have the opportunity to either get a breadth of studies or you can focus in on an area that you're really interested in. I should point out that this list that we have here is by no means the entire list of electives that we have available. For example, in image processing, there are probably three or four courses that are available in that area. You can customize your degree with options. Students may take what's known as an option to gain expertise in a specific area of study. Uh, this is something that's relatively unique to the University of Waterloo and specifically to the Faculty of Engineering. Our most popular options these days are, of course, artificial intelligence, which is a very hot topic and entrepreneurship. Uh, we find that a lot of our students want to learn how to start a business. Uh, they often come to the university with ideas uh, for a business that they may be interested in founding. And certainly we've had a lot of students that have been very successful in this area. In fact, if you were to uh, look at the statistics on entrepreneurship, one thing that you might find about the University of Waterloo is that we've actually had more students found uh, what they call unicorn companies, companies uh, that are worth over a billion dollars in valuation uh, than any other uh, universities within Canada. So this is certainly a, a core area for our students to pursue. I personally took the management sciences option uh, when I was an undergrad student, found it very useful. Uh, one of the things I really liked about it is it gave me a, a nice package of courses to complement my technical expertise. So I, I gained uh, a second area of interest and also uh, rounded out my education that way. Uh, there's, of course, a physical science option for those that are really interested in the pure sciences, uh, physics and chemistry and biology, of course. And then, of course, the software engineering option, which is a very popular one for students in computer engineering and electrical engineering who perhaps want greater uh, knowledge of the software engineering discipline. In total, there's 11 options available right now, with more being added. Now, one of the things that's unique about the University of Waterloo and its electrical and computer engineering program is that we have some of the best faculty members in the world. Uh, we have uh, award-winning faculty members in various ways. Uh, you might be surprised to find that we have eight fellows of the Royal Society of Canada, and 16 fellows of the Canadian Academy of Engineering, and seven fellows of the Engineering Institute of Canada. Uh, these are all organizations that uh, basically reward the best of the best. We have 30 fellows of the IEEE, which of course is that large technical organization I mentioned earlier. And surprisingly enough, we have one faculty member that has an Engineering Emmy Award uh, for his work in the world of image processing. Our faculty have also been very involved in entrepreneurship and they have many successful ventures. Uh, for example, DALSA, which was bought out by Teledyne, uh, IMS or Intelligent Mechatronic Systems, 
uh, which was founded by uh, Amin Basir, uh, KA Imaging, uh, Ignis Innovation, which works on flexible LCD panels, uh, Slipstream, which of course uh, was one of the technologies that enabled BlackBerry to uh, uh, do so well. Uh, back in the day, they had compression technology that made the images uh, use less bandwidth to download. Serific Wireless, which was another company that was bought out by BlackBerry. Uh, Nanolytics, uh, Saver Metrics, Thor Lab Quantum Electronics, and many other ventures that are valued at well over a million dollars. Now the co-op program is why most students uh, come to the University of Waterloo. And you should know that uh, electrical and computer engineering students are required to complete the co-op program. So in this program, you have an opportunity to complete six co-op placements and you need to require or complete five successfully in order to uh, receive your degree. What this means is that you have the opportunity to work in six different companies, explore career options to obtain 24 months of practical engineering experience. This is not like a summer job. This is a real engineering placement you get to do some real engineering projects. And you often will be involved with projects that involve products that, that launch to market. So we have a number of students working at companies like Apple and Tesla and various other companies that, that are actively producing state-of-the-art equipment. And our students are a big part of the design and deployment of that equipment. And co-op placements are paid internships. There are some universities that have unpaid internships, but at the University of Waterloo, all of our co-op placements are paid. And you will be working on real engineering projects. When you look at the uh, payment for co-op students, uh, first year co-op students earn an average of $18.21 per hour in their first term of studies. And our final term co-op students in their sixth term earn an average of $26.17 per hour. But of course, this can vary quite widely. Uh, there are students uh, working in uh, California, for example, that get paid in US dollars. And if you convert it into Canadian dollars, they do much better than this. Now, students apply for jobs online and employers decide who they want to interview. Uh, we have a, a job system that allows you to go through and read about all of the job opportunities that are available. And once you've decided which ones you want to apply to, you can transmit your resume and your cover letter electronically to the employers and they will review it. Once they've decided who they want to interview, the employers come to campus and uh, conduct interviews. And after the interviews have been conducted, students have an opportunity to rank the employers and ultimately are matched to jobs using that ranking system. These logos represent a small sampling of some of the co-op opportunities available to EC students. I'm sure you can see some logos here of companies you might want to work for. Uh, these are some amazing companies and they do, uh, quite honestly, most of the, the important work that's happening within the field of electrical and computer engineering. It's a very good sampling. You can see that we have everything from Ontario power generation on the electrical engineering side, all the way over to companies like Price Waterhouse Coopers, which may be involved in the deployment of uh, uh, consulting projects and systems uh, associated with those. We've got networking companies like Cisco, graphics companies like Nvidia. Uh, we've got processor companies like AMD and uh, of course Intel, which now owns Altera. We've got software systems like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, uh, Apple. These are all very popular companies. And then we've got some smaller names like Rockwell Automation, which is actually a big name in electrical and computer engineering. But to a high school student, you might be less familiar with them. Christie Digital, for example, which makes a, a lot of the display projectors that go into modern uh, cinemas or into a lot of the classrooms that we use today. So there's a really good sampling of, of companies uh, that we have available to us. And these employers really look to our students to fill their internship positions. They regularly have positions every single term available for our students. And uh, they 
go out of their way to ensure that students have a good learning experience while they're on their work term. Now, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Waterloo Engineering Student Life. The Engineering Society is the top level organization that organizes events for all engineering students across all disciplines. And some of the major events that they hold are the Eng Play, which is a play often written, directed, and acted by engineering students. And it's often quite a fun time to go watch that. I've actually watched two of the Eng Plays myself over the years, and it's always a very interesting play. Uh, we've got a hackathon, of course, Eng Hack, uh, which is the, uh, the term hackathon that happens once every academic term. Uh, very popular event for our students to go into. Of course, we have other hackathons as well. Uh, typically at the University of Waterloo, you can find a hackathon at least once every month uh, that's happening on campus and perhaps even more frequently than that. You may know that we're also known for Hack the North, which happens in September. And uh, that particular event is very popular. Uh, they organize a semi-formal dance uh, and they organize something called the Waterloo Engineering Competition, which is the qualifying rounds for the Ontario Engineering Competition. So across Ontario, all engineering uh, schools come together to have a major design competition every year. And uh, the Ontario Engineering Competition is that competition which examines uh, design skills, debate skills, technical speaking skills, and various other skills that, that are of interest. Um, that Ontario Engineering Competition ultimately leads to the Canadian Engineering Competition, and I'm pleased to uh, report that our students typically do very well at both the Ontario Competition as well as the Canadian Competition. In fact, uh, this year, our team won the Canadian Engineering Competition for Innovative Design, uh, which is a great feat for our students. And the Engineering Society also organizes uh, social events, a, a lot of charitable activities, and student workshops. Uh, it's often surprising to people outside the university just how much our engineering student body does for charitable organizations, uh, whether it's organizing what's uh, called the bus uh, pull that happens uh, once a year in the fall, or whether it's uh, the construction event, uh, which is uh, typically happening in March uh, during engineering month. Uh, these are all examples of events where uh, the proceeds that uh, are collected for the events ultimately go to local charities and make a huge difference in the community. Now, as a student in ECE, the ECE Society organizes events, training sessions, and clubs specifically for ECE students. This is a relatively new uh, society on campus, and they've been doing some fantastic work. The ECE department is also one of two engineering departments that has a dedicated wellness coordinator that organizes activities for faculty, staff, and students to promote wellness within our student body. I recently participated in one of these events and it was uh, quite a fun event. We had over 500 students uh, show up to uh, get apple cider at a particular event that we were holding uh, just as a break from class. Uh, at the bottom of my slide, you can see some of images of students on campus at various uh, events that were occurring. Uh, on the left, we see a student in uh, Poets, which is uh, the local hangout, if you will, for the engineering students. Uh, in the middle, we see some of our engineering students in their uh, cubbies, as they like to call them, their coveralls, uh, adorned with all of their various badges that they've uh, sewn onto them. Uh, that was taken at the Engineering Day event. And on the right, we see a, another one of our students participating in an Engineering Day event uh, that was held on campus uh, just last year. Here we see some other images of our students uh, at various events. Uh, on the left, we see students at a social event. Uh, this particular uh, event looked to be a, a paintball type event or a, an event of that sort. Uh, in the middle, we see uh, our capstone design symposium. This is where our students showcase their fourth year projects. And on the right, I've uh, focused in on one particular project, which shows the type of work that our students are doing. So here we see an Oculus VR headset, as well as a glove that's uh, being used to manipulate an object in the virtual world. Uh, clearly, ECE is a good place to be. 
So if I can leave you with a message today, it's that I want you to be a leader of tomorrow. And if you want to do that, uh, you need to know that employers want our students. Uh, according to the Globe and Mail, resumes listing the University of Waterloo are significantly more likely to generate callbacks. Uh, Microsoft reportedly hires more from the University of Waterloo than any other Canadian university, and more than most uh, U.S. universities as well. And the University of Waterloo is the number one in the world for student employer connections. So if you're looking to get a head start on your career, the University of Waterloo is definitely the place to be. It's also important to realize that our alumni are very successful. There are over 10,800 EC alumni on LinkedIn. Uh, we have uh, 434 CEOs at last count, uh, 264 CTOs, Chief Technology Officers, and then a slew of, of uh, other types of leaders within companies and, and businesses. The number that's perhaps the most striking is the 883 business founders at the end. And another thing to keep in mind, in case you're not focused on becoming a uh, an industrial professional, there's also an academic path at the University of Waterloo. People often forget that we're well known for our research as well. We often prepare students very well for going on to uh, advanced studies at the graduate level. So if you were to look at the uh, alumni that have graduated from the University of Waterloo, over 441 professors uh, have graduated from the University of Waterloo and its Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. So I'd just like to thank you for watching this video. I'd like to encourage you to learn a little bit more about the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and what we have to offer. And I certainly hope to see you on campus sometime in the future. Have a great day.